Hello everyone, I am Dr. Umar Karadin. Today I would like to speak on oral anticoagulants. As you know, thrombosis or clotting either in the veins or in the arteries are quite common. There is a condition called atrial fibrillation, that is a, a fibrillating heart which forms a clot in the heart and that dislodges into the various arteries either to the brain or to the hands, limbs or intestine or anywhere. So this can give rise to embolic occlusion. If it uh, goes to the brain, you call it as a stroke. If it goes to the hand, you can say occlusion of this artery, so the radial artery, brachial artery or the mesenteric artery, renal artery, you know, to the lower limb arteries. Sometimes uh, this can give rise to a massive stroke or if it goes to the limbs, it might lead to amputation if you don't treat it at the proper time. Okay, so there are so many conditions, there are pro-coagulant state or pro-thrombotic states, especially during peripartum or around the pregnancy time or around the, the delivery time. Or there are certain conditions like a malignancy which are prone for recurrent thrombosis. Okay, there are anti-phospholipidine antibody syndrome. There are, uh, you know, people who, who are, uh, uh, who have undergone surgery for a hip, knee or uh, who are paralyzed or uh, you know uh, he can't move about. In those uh, conditions the, uh, the, the veins in the lorism can get blocked. So this is called a venous uh, thrombosis. It can lead to uh, massive embolism. The whole clot will dislodge from the periphery, goes to the lung and cause a massive pulmonary embolism and sudden death is very common especially uh, if the person is taking rest without moving the limbs, maybe due to paralysis, maybe maybe due to fractures or surgery or some other condition. So in those conditions, we have to treat the patient with anticoagulants. Otherwise, uh, we would uh, see him maybe in a different state afterwards. So, so what are the agents available for uh, treating the thrombosis? So as you know, the th the block may be either in the arteries or on the veins. The treatment is the same whether it is in the artery or on the vein, vein because uh, we have uh, uh, parenteral drugs that means uh, you, you can give to the into the vein or in the subcutaneous tissue uh, or uh, you can give to taking you can take orally it is called oral anticoagulants. Okay. So uh, the, the drugs like heparin, low molecular heparin, hirudin and all they are basically used to treat in the acute phase like you know this if the patient has got if you are planning anticoagulation or if the patient is pregnant or if the patient has got a malignancy in those conditions uh, the treatment of choice is uh, uh, you know heparin or heparinoids or low molecular heparin sometimes uh, uh, or or for for all practical purposes we start with this uh, this uh, low molecular heparin or heparin followed by oral anticoagulants. There are two types of oral anticoagulants. One is the vitamin K antagonist. Uh, we call it as a warfarin or uh, acetron. Then there is a Novax or uh, newer oral anticoagulants like a dabigatran, uh, rivaroxaban, apixaban, edoxaban, uh, and many other new newer drugs have come. So uh, the the former one, the vitamin K antagonist. This is very uh, commonly used. This is the only treatment option for uh, mechanical heart valves or with the condition with or due to uh, valve heart disease. That is uh, the condition due to the heart valves or the mechanical valves. In those conditions, the only treatment available option is not Novax, only oral antagonists like warfarin or acetron. Okay. So, uh, what are the things you should be careful when you start uh, this oral anticoagulants? So, always start with a heparin or low molecular heparin because otherwise, uh, if you start directly with oral anticoagulants, this would give us a paradoxical thrombosis or skin necrosis. So, it is always better to start with this thing and uh, bridge with oral anticoagulants like uh, acetone or warfarin. You have to monitor, you have to monitor, so you should know that why you are starting, whether it is due to some uh, venous thrombosis, because in those conditions we, we need not continue for a long time, unless there is a tendency, hereditary tendency for recurrent thrombosis. In those conditions we may have to give a long term. But on the other hand, suppose if the patient had a surgery for the hip or knee or a bed bound or paralyzed, in those conditions you may have to give maybe 3 months or 6 months maximum 1 year. 
in uh, but on the other hand if the patient has got a atrial fib fibrillation or if the patient has got a disease of the heart like uh, mechanical valves or antiphospholipid antibody syndrome you may have to continue this medicine long term so uh, so you should know why you are using that and what are things you should be careful what are the various drugs you can use and what are the diet you should modify and how to monitor and uh, what are the potential complication and if the complication comes what you should do this is our today's area of uh, interest so uh, after you start the uh, oral anticoagulants you have to monitor very closely because our aim is to keep uh, around 2.5 in some condition it is 2.5, some condition it may be 3 or even 3, 3.5 depending on the whether you are using a valve, whether it is antiphospholipid and antibody syndrome, whether the patient is elderly, whether he has got a renal failure or malignancy, liver failure. So depending on that comorbid condition we may have to adjust but anyway it should be around 2 plus 2, 2.5, 3 or uh, 3, 3.5. Hardly ever it goes beyond 4. Okay, so you should monitor it every three to four four days uh, in a week until you get two values in the same. Maybe suppose if you get a value of 2.5, uh, first value, second value also 2.5, then you need to monitor it maybe every two weeks, then every month. Then maybe uh, once uh, you get all the values in the normal range, maybe you can do it every two months like that. But usually my practice to check it every month because it is very practical in our uh, situation in our uh, setup why i'll tell you because uh, use a lot of medicine where for cold maybe you are taking paracetamol aspirin other analgesics antibiotics antifungal uh, then uh, clopidogrel uh, then um, herbal medic medications uh, papaya vitamin e ginseng green tea amadoron so many drugs so many diet so many uh, drinks so many herbal drinks health drinks so many minutes, all this will cause an interaction. The, the interaction may be a, pho, a pharmacokinetic interaction or a pharmacodynamic interaction. And there are certain genetic uh, predisposition like uh, weak core C1 or uh, cytochrome uh, 2C9 uh, polymorphism. In those conditions, whatever you give, whether you give 10 milligram, 20 milligram, 30 milligram, it wouldn't work. There is a certain, that is a hereditary rare resistance to this uh, medication. I have uh, one or two patients. I've started with a 20 milligram of uh, warfarin, acetrom or mixed, nothing happens, the INR is remaining one. But those things are extremely rare. I have another patient where I need to use only 0.5 milligram half tablet per week. Still the INR is 2, 3 like that. So there, there, are, uh, there, there is a spectrum, maybe those people who, who to tolerate very well or who won't tolerate at all. So uh, it depends on their uh, C cytochrome P450 metabolism or their uh, you know, other um, pharmacodynamic or other ph pharmacokinetic uh, actions. So you should know that there are many drugs like amadorone, verapamil, beta blockers, statins, antifungals, esomeprazole should be extremely careful, es es uh, uh, omeprazole, clopidogrel and um, various other herbal and other medication would interact with the drugs. So whenever uh, the patient is on any of this medic uh, medicine or even alcohol, so you have to monitor it very closely, maybe every two, two to four days or twice in a week. And um, and if you remove those drugs, like if the patient had a cold and he was on erythromycin or azithromycin or some other uh, antibiotics or um, amoxicillin or a clavulanic acid, you have to monitor it. So during the um, uh, during take the antibiotics, you should monitor. After withdrawing the antibiotic or any other time, you, you have to monitor because it would give us to a sudden fluctuation. Either it goes up in the situation or lower. If it goes up, it causes bleeding. If it comes down, it causes stroke. So that's the problem. Because uh, there's only a, a narrow therapeutic range. So uh, whenever uh, any new drugs or new diet is introduced into in your uh, uh, practice, you should be careful. Sim similarly, you should be careful with the various uh, diet items, especially uh, green tea, uh, green leafy veg vegetables, spinach, uh, mushrooms, uh, then uh, cabbage, broccoli, uh, papaya uh, and uh, may many other things. So whenever uh, the uh, person takes any new uh, diet or new vegetables, you should be careful because it would interfere with its action and the INR become low. It, and once low, it gives rise to either a thrombosis or other complication related to that. So uh, 
then the, the, then you might ask me uh, so i can take um, uh, vegetables you can take provide that you should keep the vegetables or the uh, green leaves in this this the quantity should be the same you should take it every day either you should take every day the same quantity or don't take it if you take it well and good but you should monitor if you don't take it also it's good, but uh, the the important message is uh, monitor it to such an extent that uh, the two consecutive values should be the same and uh, you should always maintain to a value your your aim is to keep it at 2.5 in some case uh, I, as i told me told you it, it may be 3 3.5 so uh, there is a score called chats where score who all uh, which all people respond i mean who need that anticoagulation there is a scoring called chats where score and there is one more score called a has blood score that which would indicate the tendency for a complication so uh, today uh, my talk is uh, to tell you regarding anticoagulation what are the factors you should be careful you should monitor very frequently keep the inr in the normal therapeutic range and various drugs uh, drugs and diet would interfere with the uh, action of this drug so you should be extremely careful whenever you there is a shift of the diet or shift of the drugs then there is one more uh, group of drugs called novax like uh, da dabigatran rivaroxaban apixaban edoxaban and many other new newer drugs in those cases we need not monitor and you can take food and diet uh, without much problem because the interactions are quite low here uh and uh, we should be careful in the elderly or those with the renal failure in those cases we have to adjust or even stop the medication so but these drugs are not useful for uh, condition for valves like you know if the patient have a mechanical valve so there is a disease of the valves where this wouldn't work in all other condition is well and good but uh, but the problem with this thing is the antidote is uh, not uh, because uh, if, if you take vitamin k antidote like a warfarin acetrom there you can always reverse the action so something goes wrong you can give a vitamin k either oral or uh, iv or you can give a prothrombin concentrate or a fresh frozen plasma uh, in in this case in the novax we, uh, we can reverse with it some uh, certain drug like uh, idarizumab or adnex alpha uh, but uh, i think the availability may be an issue and it is quite costly and you would get it only if you take the original brands uh, if you take a generic brands you will have to pay the full amount for so there is a pros and cons for uh, vitamin k antagonist as well as for the novax but generally 90% of the people uh, in my practice is taking vitamin k antagonist like warfarin or oracetrop there are people who take uh, novax but uh, as i has a said told you earlier it's not effective for uh, mechanical valves and those with a valve uh, heart did, uh, i mean af due to any problem with the valves okay so uh, today my message is that uh, anticoagulation is quite common you should uh, monitor it very frequently you should know why you are using it and how long you are supposed to take suppose if you are asked to take lifelong you shouldn't stop in between and if you take the drugs you should know that which are the drugs which would interfere you should have a diary with you or a drug interaction guide so whenever there is a problem when you whenever there is a new introduction like a new drug you should know that what's what really happens when you if you take this medicine or if you draw withdraw the, the some uh, certain medication and the effect of various diet and various uh, herbal rem remedies on the on, on your drug so you should know that and um, you should uh, have a you, you you can even use a self monitoring provided that you should know everything i mean uh, various uh, everything related to the drug you can have a, something called a coagu check you can uh, self monitor at home but uh, of course you you should uh, contact your current consultant and uh, take his opinion or uh, you can ask him so even that's possible you can monitor at home so okay uh, this is regarding about oral anticoagulation thank you thank you very much bye